Hello, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of IMB Live Space. Um, welcome members of uh, IMB, uh, friends of IMB and all listeners. Um, I'm Jan Geijze. Uh, four weeks ago I was the interviewee um, about our own office, Pure Interior Architects. Today I'm in the role of an IMB board member interviewing Louise Huba of uh, Rotor. Um, Something about INB is INB is the Belgian Association of Interior Architects and we support around 300 members. Uh, our members are interior architects and we support them by information about the profession, lectures. Uh, we also have our own magazine, Nook, uh, which is uh, a professional magazine for interior, interior architects. Um, and today we have as an, an interview with uh, Rotor, uh, Louise Huba from Rotor, and she um, is part of the um, internationally, internationally recognized uh, uh, Brussels Architecture Collective. Um, so they are based in Brussels, and which is interesting is that they are pioneering in the use of uh, Second Life materials. Um, which is certainly with climate change uh, a big topic today. Um, so I will call Louise and we will start. Just a moment. I will try. I'm trying to get connection with Louisa. Um, I'm gonna see how I can connect with her. Just looking. Um, I can't find uh, Louisa yet. I will try to call her by phone and try to get her uh, in the live space. Um, can I phone? Apologies for the, the delay. Elke, I see that you're also uh, present in the live space. Can you make a phone call to Louise? I'm already phoning her. Just a moment. Dag Louise, zit jij mee in de live space? Naar Instagram gaan. Dan moet jij linksboven op het. Uh, het En normaal gesproken kan ik jou dan aanduiden. Normaal kun je deelnemen eraan. Is dat Louis Platypus? Is dat... Oké, okay, dan ga ik jou daarop inbellen. Ja. Oké, okay, super. Dag Louise. Ik had je al geïntroduceerd, Louise, um, door te melden dat uh, Rotor een... Uh, That Rotor is a uh, Brussels architecture collective uh, specialized, specialized in giving materials a second life. Maybe yeah. you can tell something more about Rotor. Who is Rotor? Yeah, so Rotor um, is actually uh, in two parts. So we have Rotor, the nonprofit organization, and then we have Rotor DC, which is a more hands on um, uh, collective of people. And we are We're not interior architects, also not architects, but we're a collection of um, architects, uh, bioengineers, um, people who study law, 
um, and all these different backgrounds and studies come together in um, in Rotor, there's the two the two um, the two sites, and I, I guess you already mentioned that the the main goal of our um, nonprofit is actually to do to research and do um, designs with reused materials. So we do this on different fronts. We do our own designs. We uh, help architects with their designs, like bigger, bigger projects. We do research and we have expos, which uh, uh, we are most known for the designs and the expos, but uh, the other parts are as big. And then Rotor DC is really the, the practical site that um, helps on site with the deconstruction, the um, refurbishment of the materials and to help install it again. Um, yeah. Yeah. In very briefly. Yeah, yeah. So I think today it's very interesting that we're for a, a group of interior architects talking and that uh, they can learn about rotor and especially rotor deconstruction. And that was something we, we talked about was interesting to mention. Can you tell something more about rotor deconstruction? In the meanwhile, I will try to show some images uh, of the, 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 the things you deconstruct and, and uh, refurbish. Yeah. So um, Rotor DC is, is younger than Rotor. So it started in 2016. And it was actually a little bit to fill a gap of, um, of materials that we couldn't find. So Rotor was um, since 2012. And visiting other companies that were doing these um, dismantling works, uh, these selling salvage materials, we found out that there was actually um, yeah, some, mat some materials that were just missing. So what we could already found in Belgium um, were very antique old materials with a high value, such as um, cast iron rad radiators, um, very expensive um, ceramic tiles with crazy motives and stuff like this but the the building materials of last century so before the war and the interbellum and and just after the war actually were kind of left out because then the very new materials that we can buy cheap were to be found with demolition companies but these uh, 50, the, the, the ones of the year 50 were actually not to be found so um, and also the another uh, group of materials that's very present in Brussels um, that are the the offices. So mm -hmm. all the materials used in offices such as um, interior walls, but also carpet tiles uh, and these things that are actually materials. They are bu built to be f to last fifty of fifty years. Yeah. Then we see that these offices get refurbished every. 15 years maybe so you have these perfect materials that go to the recycling and the aluminium and the, the the glass is separated and and recycled so we try to focus on these materials that didn't find the home somewhere else basically yeah which i find interesting is that most of you have an architectural background so of course you can also see the quality in like modernistic buildings which you tell yourself was, was even a gap and it was not looked at. Um, how do you see that? I, I, I think you have good examples about how modernistic ceilings or wall panels are reused in, in new projects. Yeah, so I don't know if the other people can see the pictures that are passing by because I don't see them. I personally but, did uh, to show them, so you, you will have to explain. And of course, I think... Okay, the, okay. And then afterwards, they can look at the fine. pictures. On, on Google, the, uh, yeah, okay. Samples, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that's that's something else that um, with Rotor DC we are mainly um, focusing on on interior uh, elements. Mm -hmm. So not the bricks, not the heavy um, beams out of metal and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's sometimes just crazy. Like now I know what, which uh, ceiling you're talking about. It's from the Bank General uh, of Fortis, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the Mille Feuilles. 
So mm -hmm. it's a, a very beautiful ceiling with um, small, small plates of mm -hmm. uh, the size of a, what was it again, a uh, thousand franc, million, I think, yeah, Belgian franc. Um, and yeah, how, how, what, so with Rodor de Zeet was a few years ago, was before I worked there, um, we invested a lot of time in carefully dismantling the whole ceiling and then it was sold and it was used in beautiful projects like a, a pharmacy in Brussels in Gaatbeek, I believe, um, but also um, parts of, of libraries where it was used as a suspended ceiling um, to make like a, a cozy space where, where people could study. Um, and yeah, if you see the pictures also of, of how it was uh, dismantled and how much uh, man hours were actually put in this and then I think they, they only managed to do uh, one floor of, for this uh, careful uh, dismantling and and the rest of the building was actually gone by the, the normal practice that has yeah. to go fast and, and so yeah some pieces are lost but it's it's really worth yeah, unfortunately, yeah. we only have uh, four square meters left. So. Yeah, so. I think I think uh, it's it's normally you order uh, new materials, you have catalogs and and everything. How it's it's totally different when you start. You you have to start. You have to think differently. I think, and yeah? when you use uh, materials that are all have a size, have a kind of color. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I the. Um... The other part of rotor comes in use. So what I what I told you before that um, so we also do design assistance. And why is this important? Because all these parts of rotor, um, well, strengthen each other. I believe. Yeah. Um, and why is it so important that we assist architects and and designers um, in this this way of uh, working with reused materials? Is indeed what you said that. Um, in, in common practice and how we get taught at, at the university and in the high schools is that you have this crazy idea and then you go for it, you order the materials, you have the whole world that's open for you, you don't mm -hmm. have limits. Mm -hmm. But then if you work with these mostly local, older materials that already have lived and have their own story, you really have to to redesign your design process basically. So you have yep. to start yep. from what you find or what's available um, and start from there. And it's also very changeable. So one moment this is available, the other moment it can be gone. And yeah. It asks a different kind of creativity, I think. And, and um, But I must say that you still, uh, the projects that I see where it's the materials that you, you uh, put on the market, um, they have still a high uh, architectural value, so um, I see that, that people have the potential um, in the in the in, in the whole world of sustainability, which is quite a big word. Um, how would you put yourself within the, the sustainable? You have the, the circular movement, the cradle to cradle, uh, recycling, upcycling. How does Rotor uh, see themselves uh, within this landscape? Yeah, I think the, I mean. We, we we don't have the solution for all, obviously, and, and we also will never pretend that we have the solution for all. Um, I think the big difference maybe with, with other um, companies that claim that they have the, the big uh, circular economy approach is maybe that, uh, that, I don't know, like, thinking about the circular economy, they often start from a completely new project product and this will this will solve everything. So you have the modular brick that you can can mm. construct with and in fifty years when the, the, the building is demolished um, and taken down, this brick will magically end up in another building. But because you I mean the building sector is so I mean, it's so wide, there is so much to do, like, it's kind of, of funny to think that you have one product that will be everywhere and then mm. you could reuse 
be reused everywhere. Well, actually, if we look at the building practice of of the the, uh, the 18th and the 19th century, it was common practice to build houses actually with the with the materials that came from other houses. Yep. Um, so I think, in a way, Rotor is maybe the most conservative and old-fashioned of all of us, <laughs> in a way. Um, but obviously also the, I mean, we all already talked a little bit about it, I guess, but the, the nicest thing about using old materials is indeed that you also conserve the story and the building practices that already existed. So instead of starting from zero, you yeah you keep kind of going with the tradition and yeah I think but it's not one of another I think you have many answers on many yeah. questions yeah yeah again I think the the big difference because of course like we say it's it's a traditional approach you have but I think the big difference is that it, it's also an architectural approach which make it makes it, uh, have a, have an important place in in architect in contemporary architecture. Um, seeing you also being present in the analysis and, and biennales as guests and everything, so and curators uh, shows that that your approach is is, is quite different. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think it's important indeed that we are, I mean, present in these in these expos. Like the last one we did was um, uh, under the. Alive under the cherry tree, which was also about this circular economy and the limits of it, um, and indeed the biennale that you mentioned, and it's 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 to give visibility to to this question as well, and also the design practices of photo itself are again like another part of um, making this still kind of scary terrain a little bit more accessible for other people um, as. I think sometimes if we talk about recycling and, and reuse, which are completely different things, but if you think yeah. about reuse and, and using old building materials, people, people often have this idea that it's um, this very DIY aesthetic. And I think Rotor somehow manages, and, and other people as well, like there are many exa good examples of, of architects and, and designers that work with reuse. Um, yeah, that it doesn't have to be at all this bricolage, DIY, do it mm. first. Mm -hmm. It can be very chic and, and you know, very well, yeah. Yeah, and of course, like you say, there's a, there's a story behind the material. Uh, it comes from a specific building or, or the, which you don't have with the new, uh, with the new um, uh, material. Um, I can give you a question that uh, I can show some pictures. I unfortunately can't. But I will, after this uh, episode, yeah. uh, put the pictures uh, uh, in the live space so um, everybody can can see the examples. If there are other questions, please uh, ask them. I can I can read it here so I can put it in in this interview. Um, Louise, you also are very uh, into Opalis. Maybe you can talk about what's what's Opalis and, and uh, what what is it, has it to do with rotor. Yeah. So, well, I'm into Opalis because it's the, the main thing that I'm doing at the moment at Rotor. So Opalis is a website that started at, um, to, in 2012. So for the people that want to see pictures, I would recommend to already go to Opalis and then you will see some examples. Um, and it's actually a website where we try to um, give a lot of information uh, on different levels about this topic. So on one side, just general information about um, reclaimed materials, but on the other hand, also a lot of uh, uh, examples, like projects built with reclaimed materials. And then the biggest section is actually um, a kind of guide on the reuse sector in Belgium, because a lot of people think it's something that doesn't really exist yet. Or they know Rotor and Rotor, they say, but we, they see us a little bit as um, something on our own, like a unique thing. But actually, in Belgium, there are hundreds of companies that sell um, yeah, reclaimed materials. And then it goes from very cheap wood that's from a, a demolition company to the super expensive uh, antiquaire, almost. Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah so and and now so Obali started around Brussels and like was also a little bit the start of Hotel DC because we saw this uh, gap of, of uh, building materials that you couldn't find on the Rio's market um, but now it's thanks to European funds actually um, also going into the Netherlands and, and France so with Rotor we are doing visits in the Netherlands to to also find uh, yeah, demolition companies antiquaires and everybody that sells um, salvaged materials yeah so you could call Opal is a kind of, of, of a website network of all these different suppliers uh, brought yeah. To yeah yeah so, like, if you're looking for a specific material, uh, it guides you to, yeah, who you could contact, contact, actually. And also gives a lot of inspiration, actually. Yeah. Um, I've heard from other um, friends that are studying architecture that looking at Opalis gave them a lot of, like, yeah, hope and, and ambiance to, to try to work with these materials. Yeah. yeah. What about the contractors? Of course, you have the contractors. Do they start to know you, like the, 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 the demolishers on the one hand? And on the other hand, how are the contractors uh, responding towards reusing materials? I can also think that, that we're still in this building society where building worlds, where, where contractors rather, I think, order something new. Yeah. Than uh, or, or do you get them enthusiastic to to reuse it, or or is it a, a how does that work? Yeah, it's a little bit on two sides, I think. Like on one hand, you have the demolition companies that um, don't always get the time to. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it takes way more time to demolish something carefully. Um, and on the other hand, you have also the yeah, the, the contractors that are actually working with, with the material. Um, but what we see, it's often it depends more on the um, the owner of the building and the architects than the contractors itself. Like, okay, you cannot really force them into working with a reuse style if they really don't want to, because you also need more knowledge often to to work with uh, reclaimed materials, as they they are not as perfect and smooth as the new ones. Mm. Um, but in general, like it depends more on the on the ones that have to pay for the works. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look if we have more uh, directions. Um, yeah, you talked about in indeed about the bricolage. Um, the recuperation. Um, can you tell something more about, yeah, maybe the, how they work together internally with you, the designers, the, the persons who design and, and, and the, the material resources? Um, how do projects come together? Is, the, is that possible to talk something about it? You mean our own design projects or yeah. the... Uh, yeah, the, the boat. Something about the own, but also about collaborations. Uh, how does collaborations work? Um, yeah, it's again, it really depends from from project to project. And also it's um, very different if we work for a private company or for um, a governmental building. Yeah. Um, as there are yeah, way more restrictions on which materials you can choose for a, for a governmental building. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really following the question. As, as, as Rotor enter in, in architectural competitions together with other architectural offices, well, what's the role then? Is, is, is it then looking at the existing building or is it about uh, putting like, in, in materials that you have in stock? Or, or yeah, it goes quite wide actually. Like, um, most of the times we start from an existing building and then we look what's possible with the material. Well, Preferably, we look at the building and we think what's possible with the building. Because yeah. you still have something that's called um, maintenance of the building, which is actually a step higher than, than uh, reuse. Like, yeah. It's the preferred um, yeah, 
way to go, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so we also try to advise a little bit or discuss with the architects what's possible uh, on, on maintenance. And then we look at the building as, as a source for materials, preferably for the, the, the projects that they're working with. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are look, lucky again that we have Rotor DC because we have a lot of um, competence in uh, cleaning materials and make them ready to be reinstalled in the building um, and to, to take care of the logistics because there is a crazy logistic that goes uh, yeah, behind the, the scenes if you, yeah, if you want to install new toilets in a new building, you order them at basically on the moment that you're going to install them, if you're uh, yeah, taking them out of your previous building and you have to store them for some years mm -hmm. and then bring them back. So, um, and then we also look together with the architects, um, like, okay, and uh, what what's possible outside of your building, like which other materials would could play a role in, in, in your new projects. And then you have these very funny uh, stories that can happen. Then you have a, a new-ish or a new building in Brussels that has, has materials from, from different old buildings uh, all around Brussels, all with their own story uh, yeah. that are all integrated in the new project. So you have a building that from its starts already has some history and you don't have to created from scratch a good example you had was about this brussels tower can you can you give that example uh, yeah so that's one the Brugger tower so i guess everyone from brussels know which one i'm talking about which is at the moment being completely refurbished um and indeed there the we had a very close collaboration still have with the, the whole um, project team really. um, and and there it's also on all the different levels that that we are working so um, the, we took out quite a lot of materials even toilets that are now completely refurbished and we found a very beautiful old uh, gran I think they are from granite granite the tiles that will yeah. be in the, the income like the the, the foyer of yeah. the new building um, and I think the, the, the funniest element is um, the old building had these very nice aluminium profiles that were uh, between the windows with some mm. like texture on it and mm. all of them will be reused as a, as a balustrade, as a handrail in the, the foyer of the new building. So that's one of these little details that actually refers to the old uh, modernistic facade, as well as um, some people might have seen it, but um, the, the, the plint of the building had mm -hmm. this very, very heavy, but super beautiful blue limestone, um, like, yeah, cladding, gigantic cladding, cladding of a, yeah. a few hundred uh, kilos so and they were all taken off very carefully with with the these big machines but like putting them in the sand and was was really beautiful to see how how careful everything was taken out and uh, it's all documented so again you can try to find pictures online yeah okay can you to end uh, tell something about your own site the, the location where you are and and uh, give people an idea about how it looks and what it all uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, contains. I, I personally visited uh, um, your location in, in Brussels uh, a few times and I'm, I was very, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it has this uh, interesting atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I, I think it tells a lot about Rotor, to be honest. Um, so we are located in Anderlecht now which is nice because we are not too far from the city center in an old uh, factory of Leonidas, the Chocolatier. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, if you enter the gates, you have yeah, just 
this big space where you see that there were some buildings before there are still some leftover tiles everywhere and some and then it's filled with um, a lot of marble at the moment a lot of tiles um, like everything that can be stored outside is, is um, arranged there uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, like um, marble from the north station at the moment and the towers of the w uh, the world trade centers um and then if you go upstairs through the way too steep stairs then you find yourself um in the, the with the lamps that come that are from the 50s and 30s that are completely refurbished with um uh, mirrors of the 60s uh, with crazy designs um, yeah and it changes all the time like it's very like I'm there every day and every day I have to look to different corners to see the new materials coming in so yeah, yeah. which is interesting that you say the refurbishment of this these lamps which which I find very interesting this 30 and 50s uh, lamps and you kind of um, I can get them, put them, uh, how do you say it, the refurbishment, you, you kind of give it a new life eh, by, by giving it new cables. Yeah, new yeah so we found this, this enormous stock of, um, of old lamps, so they were actually never used, but it's lamp caps, so all the, the old glass and everything, uh, very nice designs. And so we have a small atelier where we actually make the fittings for the lamps and we we um, do a lot of like tryouts on how to hang a specific glass bulb and uh, so it's a lot of fun going into this small work to yeah make a new old lamp with uh, the materials yeah. that now yeah. okay i think okay. Lucas will have a, a kind of uh, idea of what rotor is now I um, hope so, yeah. share the pictures so they have also a kind of visual impression uh, by it um, you want something to say to end or uh, they're all of, of course everybody's probably welcome on your site uh, yeah I think uh, now people that have more questions should just like it's a pity that you can't see anything at the moment so I think mm -hmm. now it's time to go to the website of Rotor DC of Rotor and Opalis and just get yeah. yeah inspired by what you see yeah okay so thank you Louise, for your time yeah thanks for and hosting this we also put this uh, live space uh, online so people will have the opportunity to also see it later so uh thank you very much for the interview uh, louisa yeah thanks and see you soon in under left i guess okay okay bye bye <laughs> bye So this was an interesting episode, I think, uh, from Rotor. Um, next week, it's again uh, an episode Meet the Designer with our uh, own member of IMB, Bob Bilkan, the talented uh, Bob Bilkan, the 2nd of July. Uh, and to end, I would like to thank uh, Florence, Elke, and Christophe, uh, our president of INB, for their technical assistance um, to this interview. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.